plumbing fixtures which use 30%. There, you go, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> 33% less water. 41% of the old building materials were manufactured or harvested within 500 miles of Sioux Falls. 25% of the building materials are recycled in all sealants, adhesives, paints, carpets, and coatings are low or non-VOC emitting, contributing to a healthier indoor environment. The gold level is the second highest certification that be, can, can be achieved according to the United States GBC. Points are signed for each green feature positively affecting the building's performance. Based on those points, Sharapa ranks in the top 35% of all the LEED certified projects in the United States. Sharapa Place is also equipped for those who opt for greener modes of transportation. There are 25 bicycle spaces and four shower changing rooms to accommodate bicyclists and runners, as well as preferred parking with plug-ins for hybrid vehicles. Going green is all about doing the right thing. The lead process has helped create a great signature building for Sioux Falls, said Je Jeff Slurslick, president of Whole Walt McDowell Insurance and owner of Sarapa Place. Sarapa Place paved the way for a green building in South Dakota as it officially became the first building in the state to achieve leadership in energy and environmental design. Gold certification for the United States Green Building Council. There are some other green, uh, Sioux Falls lead projects, and one was the Courthouse Square, the Museum of Visual, Visual Materials, Sioux Falls Design Center, which is soon to be, the Raven Headquarters, which is soon to be, and the South Sioux Falls Environmental Educational Center. Thank you, sir. Uh, to continue on with our uh, agenda here, the first thing the Planning Commission is going to do is to approve the consent agenda. Uh, these are non-controversial items, um, and they will all be all approved with one motion. Uh, Denise, if you wouldn't mind reading those, please. Approval of the February 5th, 2014 minutes of the regular meeting. Item two is Platts. Item three, the 2014 02 conditional use permit in the RS2 residential district to construct a group home located at 228 North Sycamore <laughs> Avenue. Item four, 2014 02 conditional use permit in the RA1 residential district to install a telecommunications tower located east of South Sycamore Avenue and north of East 41st Street. Item five, 2014-02-06 conditional use permit in the RD residential district to construct multiple dwellings with a maximum of four units located at 4224, 4228, 4232, and 4300 North Pennsylvania Avenue. Item six. 2014-02-08 conditional use permit in the RD residential district to construct multiple dwellings located south of East Chatham Street and west of South Bonson Avenue. Item seven, 2014-02-02 preliminary subdivision plan for Pinewood Edition located east of South High Cross Trail and south of West 85th Street. Thank you. Um, and again, these are non-controversial items that are going to be all approved with one motion with no further discussion, unless there's somebody from the audience that has uh, an issue or question for one of these and would like it moved to the regular agenda. If staff has any thoughts on the consent, nope. planning commission members, anybody wish to pull one off? If not, I'd look for commission action. Make a motion to pursue to approve the consent agenda. Yeah. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say yes. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. So if anybody was here for a consent agenda item, <laughs> uh, it is passed and you are free to leave. With that, we'll move on to the regular agenda. If I could have a motion to approve the regular agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 <clears throat> Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Uh, so 
So then we move on to the regular agenda item number eight. Item eight is an ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the code of ordinances of the city by amending chapter 157, subdivisions, appendix A, certificates for preliminary plans, and appendix B, certificates for plats and replats. Mm -mm. Good evening, members of the Planning Commission, members of the audience, viewers at home. I'm Shauna Goldammer. I'm the Zoning Enforcement Manager, and I'm here as the applicant uh, regarding this subdivision ordinance amendment. Uh, it's primarily a cleanup ordinance where we are uh, changing the signature blocks, both on a preliminary plan, and then section two is for those plats that are in Lincoln County, but in our platting jurisdiction. Uh, currently, the Lincoln County ordinance on their plats requires just the planning director's signature, um, and we didn't make that change to be in harmony with their ordinance, so that was uh, what the proposal is for Section 2. Section 1 uh, legitimizes the part of the preliminary subdivision plan because it's primarily an electronic document anymore, and what we're doing is rather than having a paper copy with a physical signature, where with this amendment, we will recognize the approval of the city council with their resolution number rather than a signature. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Questions? Thank you. Pretty cut and dry. Thank you. Did anyone from the audience wish to comment on item number eight? With that, I'd look for planning commission action. I'll make a motion to approve item number eight. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, seeing none, all in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, number eight passes. We'll move on to item number nine. 2014 <coughs> conditional use permit in the RS2 residential district to allow a duplex located at 205 South Lindell Avenue. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Diane DeCoyer with the planning staff. The project here is Lindell Loft. The applicant is Dale Ruff. The conditional use is in the RS2 residential district to allow a dwelling of a single family attached. The applicant is requesting approval to construct an accessory garage loft at 20, excuse me, 205 South Lindale Avenue. Because the application for the existing land use for, of a single family residence with an accessory garage loft is compatible with the surrounding areas, staff recommends approval of the conditional use permits. This is a conditional. This is a conditional use permit. Conditional use permits are less, or excuse me, are uses permitted within zoning districts with conditions. All conditional use permits must meet zoning and building codes. Conditional use approvals or denials are resolutions and are final, final unless appealed. I can answer any questions that the commissioners might have. Do we have any questions for Diane? Dan, I see this particular parcel is located in the floodplain. Is there anything that the petitioner needs to do in, additional to, in addition to the regular procedure to uh, ensure that he will be able to pull the necessary permits to move forward? The occupancy of the loft is actually above the garage, so they will be above flood elevation, which is um, what's recommended above that. I think it's at 1462 through here. So Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is the applicant here? You want to come up to the podium here, introduce yourself, and then see if there's anything you'd care to add. Um, I'm Dale Ruff, and uh, she covered it pretty good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Thanks, Dale. Did anybody have any questions for Dale? Uh, Mr. Ruff, I have a question. Is this going to be more for your personal use, or is it going to be designed as a rental unit? Or uh, this structure is—it's uh, garage space down below, and I'm planning on living upstairs. And then the existing house on the property will be 
a rental for whoever, my mom or somebody. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Anybody else in the audience that wanted to comment, comment on item number nine? With that, I look for planning commission action. I'd like to make a motion to approve the uh, application. I'll second that. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? It's an allowed use in this neighborhood, and I think it makes sense. Obviously, it's uh, above the floodplain for the residential, so yep. there's really no reason not to move forward. Thank you. No further discussion. Uh, we have a motion and a second. So all in favor, please say yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item nine passes. We're just flying through here. All right. Item number 10. 2014 02 conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District for a temporary or emergency shelter located at 101 North Indiana Avenue. Hello again. This is Diane with the planning office. Uh, the project here tonight is the Bishop Dudley Hospitality House. The applicant is the Catholic Diocese. Matt Altoff is here uh, representing them. The conditional use permit is in the C2 General Commercial District for a temporary or emergency shelter located at 101 North Indiana Avenue. Um, in this particular case, there are some criteria that had been set back in 2005 for an emergency shelter, so I'm gonna review some of that. Um, in this case, one criteria is the location has to be compatible with characteristics of surrounding uses and not injurious to surrounding properties, including residential neighborhoods. The location of the proposed shelter is located in the C2 General Commercial District where this is permitted. Criteria two, the facility is being fully enclosed within a building except for a designated outdoor enclosed area. The conceptual site plan identifies a 19,600 square foot enclosed building and an adjacent green space located to the east of the front entrance. Criteria three, the distance between the proposed use and in an elementary or secondary school measured from lot line to lot line is not less than 1,000 feet. Whittier Middle School is located 1,175 feet to the northeast of the proposed shelter. Criteria four, the submittal of a site plan is in accordance with the city um, ordinance, and that's what we've got here up on the screen. Criteria five, the submittal of a written management and security plan which outlines management and security provisions and includes a neighborhood issues management strategy that also has been provided by the Catholic Diocese and was included with the report. Um, a neighborhood meeting shall include, but not as limited to city staff representative and a council person, shall be conducted prior to a city public hearing which addresses site improvements, building design, and good neighbor components, and addresses the means for dealing with any future problems as may arise, including crime prevention, alcohol, and drug use policies, and the like. There was a neighborhood meeting held on Thursday, February 20th at Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, Michelle Erpenbach and myself were in attendance at that meeting. Some of the site improvements, building design, good neighbor components addressing any future problems that may arise, including crime prevention, alcohol, and drug use policies were discussed. Uh, criteria seven, additional neighborhood meetings shall be organized and held by the applicant to ensure conditional use compliance. One neighborhood meeting shall be held within 90 days after business operation begins, and another neighborhood meeting shall be held prior to the one-year anniversary of the business operation. So after it is approved, if it is approved here tonight, and if necessary, going forward to city council, if it's approved, they'll be required to do that. Um, because the application has provided clarity to indicate the location nature and extent of the work proposed. Staff recommends approval of the conditional use. This is a conditional use application. They are permitted uses within the zoning districts with condition. All conditional use permits must meet zoning and building codes. 
conditional use approvals or denials are resolutions and are final unless appealed. I can answer any questions that you might have. Any commissioners have questions? None of, I don't have any of city. Thank you, Dan. Okay, thank you. Is the petitioner here? Good evening, members of the commission. My name is Matt Altoff. I serve as chancellor for the Diocese of Sioux Falls, and it's a privilege to be before you today. Appreciate immensely the efforts that the planning office has put forward to gather our application and make certain that all the requirements or prerequisites are there. Uh, we feel that as a diocese, we've put together a uh, a plan that addresses those prerequisites and uh, all the more grateful for the what I would de deem the genius of the process that our city has orchestrated requiring public input. I think that the input that we've gathered has been all the more beneficial as we as a diocese aspire to achieve the vision that Bishop Swain has set out for and that is to provide needed services to members of our community who happen to be homeless or needy services that aren't currently provided today or services that are provided in locations that are in disparate, multiple places. Hopefully through consolidation of those, they'd be offered uh, addressing some of the gaps, some of the gaps where you have a facility offering services for one particular moment, and then there's a lapse or a lull in that offering, and then they have to transient, they have to travel uh, to another location. Uh, obviously that's where we've come to appreciate where some of the concerns might come up, where individuals are loitering, they have little to do, maybe they're even inebriated, uh, suffering from social or mental disorders, and, and those are not good conditions. So our desire would be that the Bishop Dudley Hospitality House would in fact be a safe haven for those individuals to come, uh, to be constructive with their time, to uh, have some of their specific or acute needs met, as well as long-term needs. There'd be a strategies to hold those individuals <laughs> accountable that they might receive, uh, whether it's skilled training, whether it's um, any sorts of social needs that are out there, social assets that our community has to offer that might enable them to be a better, more productive member of society, uh, God willing, able to use those gifts that they've been given in any way. So um, it's a short of it. Deeply appreciative. Subsequent to our uh, public hearing where we heard many there's been lots of discussions with public business owners or neighboring business owners very grateful very understanding of their concerns and uh, I think it's a beautiful reflection of a neighborhood that that has passion has concern they care about the neighborhood I'm also especially grateful for the input that our Sioux Falls Police Department uh, speaking directly even with Chief Barthel uh, myself as well as others on the force that are very supportive of ways that we can help you we being the police department help you being the diocese of Sioux Falls to establish some really critical goals uh, for securing the facility, for securing uh, the grounds, the perimeter, and making certain that those guests that come to the facility are, 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 are preserved, their, their integrity is preserved, their safety is preserved, um, but then also the neighbor by, by extension doing that too. So. With that, I'd open it up if there's any specific questions you might have. Commissioners, any questions? Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Matt, I understand you had a neighborhood meeting on uh, Thursday, February 20th. Have you had additional meetings uh, subsequent to that uh, with neighbors? You mentioned the police. Can you give us um, uh, m maybe some additional detail? Sure, we meetings. had a multidisciplinary meeting that was inspired, um, grateful for Diane's, uh, Ms. DeCoyer's um, inspiration of that, that we, it was again multidisciplinary because we had public works represented, we also had uh, the police department represented in addition to, to planning. And part of that was what are strategies? 8th Street is, is uh, it was very clear, that's a, it's uh, not, not, I'm not an expert on this, but the understanding is that that has scheduled for some site improvements or some road improvements. With that will be lighting improvements. Obviously, that's one of the uh, kind of an elementary element to securing a facility. Also, some very tangible, specific examples uh, offered from the police force of real-time experiences that 
took place when they would visit the Salvation Army facility that's obviously operated out of a gymnasium currently. Um, anything that serves as a basketball court by day and a place to put cots by night, obviously less conducive for providing an overnight shelter, which this facility, uh, God willing, would be providing. And so um, how do you take the lessons of what you see? Where do you store things? Where do you, where do you keep people's belongings? Where do you, how do you segregate genders? Those sorts of things, very, very constructive input uh, that the police force has already offered. And most, most importantly, I think in my mind, they've, they've, they've pledged to work with us as we continue to pursue this vision. So. Thank you. Other questions? All right. Thank Deeply you very much. appreciate the commission's consideration. Did anyone else from the audience care to comment? My name is Krista Bartman. Um, I'm a parent and a resident in the Whittier neighborhood. Um, my biggest concern is that we're talking about housing a very large population of potentially dangerous residents uh, 100 feet out of the boundary of our school. This is a school where we have almost 1,000 students, um, low-income students that walk to school. You know, these are kids that are going to be walking right past this facility. And my big concern is that there's an open door policy. There's, you know, what regulations are being placed on alcohol and drug use, if any. Are we going to be looking at uh, violent criminals, sex offenders? What kind of regulations are we going to be in there? And right now, we don't have those answers. So that is the biggest concern as a parent. Um, also, we're concentrating a large population, a large amount of these types of facilities within our neighborhood boundaries. We have multiple facilities already, and I feel like you know, some of that burden maybe could be dispersed throughout the city. So as we look at the neighborhood, we also look at the city planning. I'd like to consider that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, hold on just one second. Did anybody have any questions for this young lady? Any questions? I have a question. I understand that uh, should this go through this conditional use permit, that the Salvation Army then will no longer offer their services. So uh, do you still feel that you're going to have a concentration when we're not going to have any longer have two facilities, we'll be back to one facility? Right now we have the St. Francis House and we also have the Union Gospel Mission within our boundaries. So we currently have those as day shelters and then the Salvation Army as a warming house. Um, the St. Francis House and the Union Gospel Mission, though, do have regulations. You know, the Union Gospel Mission doesn't require or doesn't allow alcohol use while staying. And unfortunately, the Salvation Army doesn't have those regulations. So that's a big concern is that it's a similar facility to the one that we're having the most problems with. So Thank any you. other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Anna Borns, and I uh, live in the Whittier area. I've lived there for 63 years. Um, my concern is why this area? They have St. Joseph Cathedral that is sitting empty. Why aren't they utilizing their own buildings? The school is sitting empty, St. Joseph Cathedral School. And that's, I don't think that's a question we as the Planning Commission can answer. That would have to be a question for the, the diocese as to why they would choose this site. It, you know, it seems like if you're going to put one of these up, you want to do it where the population is. Uh, but other questions, comments? Well, first off, that school is too close to another school. So, so St. St. Joseph's close. Cathedral is within 150 feet of Hawthorne elementary versus a thousand over a thousand feet for Whittier Middle School. If we're to keep improving the east side, I don't understand how this is going to help us. As homeowners, what is this going to do our, to our property values? We have been outside working in our garden and have had the homeless come up and ask for money and get quite upset if you don't have it. The police can't be there 24-7. Anybody else have questions for? 
Thank you. Anyone else wish to comment? Well, I have several concerns about this location. I'm a business owner down there. We have enough problems with first, these people. Can, can you give us your name and address oh, first, please? Sorry. Marion Reefer, 121 South Franklin. Thank you, Marion. And uh, we are annexed into the downtown district. Now, you're moving it from downtown to across the street from downtown. That just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. I don't, see, I don't think what is getting, what is the the big vision for downtown was to improve it. I don't think anything is getting moved, though. Correct me if I'm wrong. Hmm. I don't know that anything is getting moved. Yeah, we're Discount Merchandise Center, and we are downtown. That's what they tell me. And this facility is across the street from us. Okay, that's one concern. Is there a law against panhandling and soliciting? Because the other stores complain about people asking for money. I don't even know. I haven't investigated it. OK? That's probably, we have the city and, attorney, and he's shaking his head yes. So yes, there is a law against that. OK, and OK, we're concerned about the school kids. What about the kids that go swimming at Nelson Park? They'll be walking right across, right across that property. They need to be protected, too all summer long. OK, and if this is passed, religious groups are tax free. It's going to take away taxes from our schools, our parks. What are you going to do about that? Got any answers for me? Well, Mary, and we are, what we deal with up here is not, and unfortunately, the majority of things that you are addressed are not addressed under the Planning Commission. Uh, our role here tonight, this is an approved use under a C2 commercial. So we need to make a decision tonight as to what conditions can we put on this building and on the facility that goes in this building. Um, as it relates to property taxes, I think our um, city attorney has said clearly panhandling is not uh, permittable, so I think that needs to be taken up with law enforcement. Um, but our role as a planning commission really is as it relates to land use. This is permitted under C2. I don't for one minute want you to think that we are not, and certainly me personally, empathetic to your concerns. But that is not the role of the city planning commission for the city of Sioux Falls. I think the city council uh, should be happy to address many of your concerns, um, but our role here tonight is to really determine the conditions upon which the neighbors would like to see on this facility. Well, I think it's too close to the park. Those kids are walking by there. We should not subject our children to that. I can appreciate that. Was there anyone else that wanted to comment? If not, I would look for commission action. I will make a motion to approve item number 10. We have a motion and a second. Now would be a great time for some lively discussion. <clears throat> I think I said a lot of what I, I believe pertains to this particular piece of property. Um, there are already uh, set up by the city of Sioux Falls seven conditions that attach naturally um, to this. I think that um, the opportunity for additional public meetings, uh, if the conditional use is permit permitted, once the facility is opened, and again, within that one year review time, um, I think are all very warranted. I appreciate very much that the uh, law enforcement in the city of Sioux Falls, uh, as, long as, as well as public works, recognize that there are some things that they can do to support the neighbors and their concerns in this, in this particular neighborhood. Um, 
I guess personally, I would disagree that we have an undue concentration if we're opening something and closing something that appears to be neutral to me. Um, but I understand that they may look at that differently as they certainly are entitled to. Um, I do feel that this population that is being served is already in this neighborhood. How can we make it better for the people that live there, the people that work there, and the people that use those facilities? I think these conditions help lay out a significant number of opportunities for us to do that. Thank you, Jesse. Yes, sir. I think I'm on. I seconded because of many of the same reasons that Commissioner Smith has just uh, laid out for us very succinctly. The idea here is I think the positives outweigh the negatives in overall benefit to uh, the, the community and also the residents nearby. I think over time they will find, at least it's our, our intention, that this facility could help alleviate some of the problems of people wandering around at night. They'll have a place to go. And I think this would be a, a good step in a positive direction. I see more positives than negatives. Thank you, Denny. Any other discussion? Well, from a comprehensive plan point of view, uh, this appears to fit into the bigger picture of where uh, Sioux Falls and the planning uh, group has been very careful about laying out the correct kind of uh, complementary uses. Uh, as we look at the, uh, the neighbors, I recognize some neighbors may not be real thrilled about the particular elements of this discussion. But from a land use point of view, which is what the commission is all about, this seems to be fairly compatible with its general neighborhood area. So that seems to uh, fit fairly well. I, th I also agree with the uh, previous comments about item number seven, there being additional neighborhood meetings. Uh, that is unusual for a community to allow those kinds of things for uh, the public to be able to make their voice heard and make sure that the owners of this facility, the Catholic diocese, can be responsive to those kinds of concerns, which I appreciate and I think is a great requirement. So I think it seems like it's been pretty well thought out. Thank you. Anybody else get to chime in? Well, I, I guess I'm in concurrent with um, the other commissioners here on this that it is it is a good stewardship um, it may alleviate some of the problem of if the Salvation Army does close of the traffic coming from point a walking all the way through the neighborhood to get to the Salvation Army now they're closer uh, say from the Union Gospel or someplace like that and hopefully the, the diocese is listening to the neighbors in regards to the alcohol, that they have a firm plan. Because as I look through the management and security plan, it doesn't address alcohol usage. Okay, And hopefully they will add something to that working with the city so that the neighbors know that, yes, there is... We're going to allow alcohol. We're not going to allow alcohol. You know, we're going to take on the, the very inebriated people. We're not going to take the very inebriated people. Hopefully, this security and management plan will be updated a little bit, and the diocese will let the neighbors know what their plan is to do with the alcohol. Well, and Commissioner, I think that's the, the opportunity for the neighborhood meetings as well as to where they can um, pose their questions, concerns at those. and. You know, hopefully with the security management plan in place, along with the new lighting along 8th Street, I mean, that'll alleviate some of those concerns um, for you all as well. Well, I think we've had some pretty good discussion. We have a motion and a second. So I'd ask all in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. I believe that is the end of our agenda. So I would look for a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, please say yes. 
Yes. Yes. yes. We're adjourned.